So first of all, I just want you guys to know that today we're focusing on buying homes and what that's going to entail in terms of costs. Um, we're also looking at amortization, I can't even say it today, amortization, I can't say it, but anyway, um, what the definition of that is, is basically, is as you're paying for your home, you're not only paying for interest, but you're paying for a chunk of your home, a little sliver. So each time you pay your loan back, you're paying interest and the sliver, so to speak, okay? So the more, the closer you get to your end date of your, home, your loan, the larger that piece of the pie of the home that you own. Does anybody have any questions about what that is? Okay. So first of all, let's talk about what a mortgage is. Okay, a mortgage, whoopsie, would help. A mortgage is a long-term payment, a long, long-term loan for the purpose of buying a home. and for which the property is pledged as a security for payment. Hopefully you guys can read my writing. Okay, so basically it's what you pay monthly for your house when you have a loan. Okay, a down payment. You guys have already learned this one really, but the official Definition of this is the portion of the sale price the buyer initially pays to the seller. Amount of the mortgage, this one's really easy. This is the sale price minus the down payment. <clears throat> a mortgage broker. A mortgage broker is really a company that <clears throat> finds a mortgage lender willing to make you a loan. Okay, so they basically save you the time of having to go through and applying at a multiple different places for a loan. You basically just apply through them and they'll hunt around for you and find you a loan. And sometimes they'll even give you comparisons. They'll say, well, this one's offering this, this one's offering this, and, you know, make advice as well. Okay. 
a fixed rate mortgage. I'm going to move this up a little bit. Oops. Don't tip it. Okay. A fixed rate mortgage is mortgages that have the same monthly payment. I think my handwriting is getting worse as I go. During the entire time of the loan. Okay. So the advantage to that is you don't have to worry about the loan, uh, the mortgage going up or down. You know you have a fixed payment every month, and you can plan for it accordingly. Okay, it doesn't change. Whereas the variable adjustable rate mortgage, the ARM, um, that one has payments uh, that change according to the changes in interest rates. Okay. Mortgage. Yep. Silent. Yeah. Well, yeah. Mortgage. <laughs> As an interesting aside, what is the base word of mortgage? Mort. mort, mort. mort. And what does mort mean? Uh, Death. Death. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway. <laughs> yeah, it's recording. <laughs> yeah. Hey, how's it going? Okay. Okay, so the one thing about variable um, adjustable R R rate mortgage is like lots of times they'll have a lower, a really enticing uh, lower interest rate in the beginning. And then, like, after three years, it'll balloon. Um, so it'll be like, oh, this is a great deal. But then they could really inflate it in the end. Yeah. Where's the recording from? Oh, mm-hmm. Okay, so points. <clears throat> I don't know if you guys ever heard of your parents talking when they're buying a, buying a house or um, getting a mortgage, but how many points did you pay for that? And I heard my because we moved so many times when I was a kid, I never knew what they were talking about, but I knew it was bad. Because, oh, I paid six points, or oh, I paid three points. I'm like, what does that mean? Well, this is what it means. It is a one-time charge. That equals one percent of the loan amount. Usually charged <coughs> at the closing of the loan. Okay? So if you got if you have a loan for $100,000 what is the points on if you if you charge one point how much are you going to pay at closing $1,000 Okay so it can be 
pretty, can get pricey. So lots of times when people are <clears throat> negotiating a sale of a house, they'll say, okay, I'll buy your house at your selling price, but you're going to pay the points. <laughs> you know, so it's a negotiable thing sometimes, okay? <laughs> actually, in some houses when you buy, you can actually negotiate in a vacation. Did you know that? You can even do that. Some people will say, I will pay for a trip to the Bahamas if you buy my house. It's interesting what they'll even look, put into the contract. Okay. Truth in lending disclosure statement. We talked about this the other day a little bit when we were talking about credit cards. This is true with houses as well. It's a statement... A lender is required to show the borrower that shows the APR okay and the APR takes into account both the points and the interest rate. Of the loan. They do that so they don't surprise you. They're not allowed to surprise you later on. You don't want to sign the dotted line and then, oh, by the way, <laughs> you owe me six points. That would be a bummer. Okay? <clears throat> and the last one on here is the escrow account. You guys ever heard of an escrow account? Kind of something new? Especially for new buyers, and this is going to affect you guys when you buy your first house, especially. Um, one of the things they do is they charge um, for insurance. And I'm not talking about insurance on the house. It's an insurance that you will pay your mortgage. So basically, you're paying the bank their insurance cost. Okay? They're taking out insurance on you. In case that you don't pay your mortgage, it helps pay for their, you know, for their investment in you. Insurance pays all. Yep, you pay insurance for, and you also have to pay. It's also to take out, um, takes out money automatically for your property taxes. Okay, so an escrow account is an account used. by the lender to pay taxes and insurance. Now, this is usually added in to your monthly mortgage, okay? And, you know, out of curiosity, you should ask your parents if they're still having to pay escrow or not, okay? Um, once you have, if you have a 20% down for your house, they don't make you pay insurance anymore. But if you don't have 20% down, uh, they will make you pay both insurance and taxes. But escrow is usually just covering taxes if it's not the insurance part, Okay? You can really save yourself a bundle of money monthly if you have your 20% down, the full 20%. Okay? All right. Next page.
All right. Um, so one of the things I wanted to point out is that this says the amount lenders expect at the end of T years. This is part of a, um, a formula. Make sure you put an arrow going to that because that one goes there. And then this one, <clears throat> you save the amount A dollars in the annuity by paying PMT dollars N times for a year for T years. These are not new formulas. You've had these formulas already earlier in the chapter, but this is applying to houses. Okay? So the first one is if, um, remember when we were talking about if it's um, the interest is charged more than one time a year. Okay? So this is the second one. This is when it's only charged one time a year. <coughs> Oopsie. And the last one on this page, I'll delete this little line here, um, is here, is how much you pay for your, your interest of loans, okay? So I want to go through a little example here. The price of a home is $220,000, and the bank requires 20% down payment and three points at the time of closing. The cost of the home is financed with a 30-year fixed-rate mortgage at 7%. Okay? All right, so it says find the required down payment. How do I find that? Yep, 20% of the price of the home. So let's do that. We have 0 0.20 times 220000 Okay, if you would put that in your calculator, you're going to end up with a total of forty-four thousand. That one's pretty easy. Okay, and then it says find the amount of the mortgage. We talked about that earlier. Yeah. Oh, never mind. I thought it said zero times twenty. Oh, it's, it's yeah, zero point twenty. Okay, so it's the price of the home that we agreed to, which was twenty two thousand or two hundred twenty thousand, minus the down payment. If you put that in, you will find it's one hundred seventy six thousand dollars. In this case, okay. Then it says, how much is paid at the closing? Well, remember, we said it, earlier in the, it said three points. Okay? And three points must equal 3%, because each point is 1%, right? So if our mortgage is $176,000, we're going to take that times 0 0.03. Okay, that's a decimal point there. So the amount that I'm going to pay at closing time is $5,280. And usually they want that now. You don't put that into your mortgage. Okay? So something to really think about when you're going to buy a house, you've got to include all the costs of actually purchasing the house. Questions on that? Okay, let's finish. Okay, D, it says, find the monthly payment, and we're, con we're in, um, still continuing on with the information that we had on the page before, okay? So it says, find the monthly payment, including escrow tax, excluding escrow taxes and insurance, okay? So remember that our formula is this. The payment equals P times R divided by N divided by 1 minus 1 plus R divided by N to the negative NT. Okay? So that is our formula that we're using. So... 
How much was our loan going to be for? Yep. $176,000. <laughs> okay. And our rate was 0.07%. And it's going to be a monthly payment, right? So that would be divided by 12. Okay. Then on the bottom, we'll have 1 plus 1 or, sorry, it should be 1 minus 1. Yeah. 1 minus 1 plus 0 0.07 again. That should be a 7. I don't know if you can see that. Over 12. To the negative 12 times 30. Negative 12 times 30. 30 years. Yep. Okay. So if I were to put that all together, and when you're doing this on your calculator, I really recommend you find the top, find the bottom, and then put them together. Okay? Yeah. Okay. So this will be 1000 $170.93. If I were to round that up, just to make my further calculations easier, it's $1,171. Okay? Considering my rent is about $1,700 a month, this is not bad. <laughs> so... Okay, find the total cost of interest over 30 years. So we want to go through and see how much we're actually paying in interest. What we're going to do is take our monthly payment, $1,171, times uh, the number of payments that we make in 30 years. So that's 12 times 30. 360 payments total, okay? If we do that, we actually end up paying 421000 $560 total. How much was our mortgage? What was our loan for originally? 176. So we're going to subtract that. So what we actually paid in interest was $245,560. Okay, which is a lot more than what the home was worth in the first place. Okay, number two says, okay, that was a 30-year payment. Wait, but the answer for E is for the 42? 245,560 was the answer for E. Oh. 245,000. 560. That's how much you paid in interest. Okay. So number two says, well, we figured out how much we paid in interest for a 30-year loan. Let's look at what we would pay if we were to change that to a 15-year loan. Okay. Now, what happens with the 15-year loan? What's going to happen to your monthly payment? It's going to increase. You're going to be paying more per, per month but you're going to pay off your house in half the time. And so therefore, your interest will be less in the end. So let's see what we're going to pay monthly for a 15-year loan. Okay? Oops, I didn't mean to twist this. Okay. So, <clears throat> once again, our formula is payment equals P, which is how much we have a loan for, R over N over 1 minus 1 plus R over N times the negative NT. Okay? So, $176,000 at 0 0.07 over 12. 
over 1 minus 1 plus 0 0.07 over 12. Now, this time, instead of um, t being 15, it's going to be, uh, t being 30, it's going to be 15. So it's going to be negative 12 times 15. If you put that in your calculator, you're going to end up with $1,581.93. Which rounds up to be one thousand five hundred and eighty-two dollars. Uh no, you don't have to round it up, but it just makes my further calculations down the way a little easier. I'm not dealing with a decimal. Okay, so compare that one to my monthly payment before. Fifteen eighty-two versus eleven seventy-one. Yeah, okay, so it's about 400 more a month. If you have 400 liquid every month like that, it'd be to your advantage to go ahead and, and do a 15-year loan. I don't know if people have an extra 400 laying around every month or not, but, okay. If you don't have kids, for sure. Okay. So, let's find out the total interest paid over 15 years. We're going to take the same process that we did before. It's going to be 1582 times 180 this time, because 12 times 15 is 180. So, the total interest we're going to pay is, two eight, or the total payments is 284760 And then we're going to subtract our original loan amount. So our total interest paid this time was a thousand one hundred eight thousand seven hundred sixty. So how much interest is saved by reducing the mortgage from thirty to fifteen years? Well, the one for thirty years was two hundred forty-five thousand five hundred sixty, minus the one for fifteen years, and that's one hundred thirty-six thousand dollars eight hundred. So instead of paying interest with that. We could have put that towards retirement, a nice chunk of change, or to school, school for our kids. So do you guys see the advantages to paying it off earlier? Okay. Last page. Okay, monthly payments and interest are for other kinds of installment loans. Your credit card has a balance of $4,200 and an interest rate of 18%. Okay, we were looking at 7% with the house ones because those are lower interest. Your credit card easily is around 18 and that's cheap, actually. Sometimes if you look at your credit cards, they're more like 25 27 especially for those of you who are new at credit, younger people, they're going to charge you more. Okay, so, um, didn't mean to write that there. Let me move this up a little. So, uh, if there are no further purchases, charge the card, how much must you pay each month? Okay, so we're going to use that same formula that we had before. P, R over N equals 1 minus 1 plus r over n to the negative nt. Okay, so what we have on our card is 4,200 times 18, point 18 by the way, because it's an interest rate of 0.18, divided by 12, over 1 minus 1 plus 0.18 over 12, and we want to, um, it's 12 times a year for two years. So negative 12 times 2. So if you put that in your calculator, you should end up with 209.65. If you rounded that up, it would be 210. So part B says, how much total interest will you pay? So we're going to take that monthly payment 
times the number of payments that we make, which is 2 times 12, that's 24 payments, and that's 5,040. And our original amount was 4,200. Subtract that, you ended up paying $840 in interest. All right, so the moral of the story is what? I hope you guys get the moral of the story on this one. Yeah. Pay it off. Don't let it wait. If you're going to use a credit card, pay it every month, totally. I would recommend you use debit. Don't use a credit card. Debit is a cash card. It's what, it comes directly out of your account. So you got to be careful with it, but if you're using mint.com, you can track your debit, what you're using. But don't you need a debit or a credit card because you have to build up your credit score? Um, you know, some people say that. So, but if you have a credit card, just don't use it. Don't use it. Okay? I'm telling you this based on my own pain and suffering. Okay? I'm not kidding. Okay? So... Just remember that. I'm going to 